So this is a problem about a train. And who doesn't like trains? Well, what do we know about this train? We're given its velocity at a series of points in time. And we also know that the uh, velocity is differentiable over the entire interval in question. And we have a totally gratuitous picture of a train, which serves no educational purpose whatsoever. But the problem is going to ask us to perform certain operations on understanding the train's position, velocity, acceleration, and uh, distance between it and another chain, a train. So the formulas I've listed and the information I've listed on the right should be helpful in addressing that. And so away we go. Let's start with part A. We have to find the average acceleration. Now, we don't see any acceleration listed here, so that could be a problem. But what saves the day is when we recognize that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. And so average acceleration is the same as the average rate of change of the velocity, V A of T. That we can calculate. The average rate of change of a quantity is the difference between the uh, values of that quantity over the endpoints of the interval of interest divided by the distance between the endpoints. So that we can calculate. V sub A. Now what do we want to know? It's average rate of acceleration, average acceleration uh, over the interval 2 to 8. So we're going to look at V sub V A sub 8 minus V sub A of 2 and we'll divide by 8 minus 2. Well, we know that that's 6 in the denominator. What do we got for VA8 and VA2? Well, 8 is negative 120. 2 is 100. Negative 120 minus 100 is... What is that? Negative 220. And we probably could just leave it like that. But we will tempt fate and simplify it by dividing by 2. We ought to list what this average acceleration's units are. And since the velocity is in meters per minute, the units of acceleration are meters per minute squared. Even if they didn't ask for it explicitly, we're going to tell them what the units are. Let's fix this. Meters per minute squared. Okay. Done and done. B. Can we conclude, can we, can we conclude that A's velocity is negative 110 meters per minute? Somewhere over the interval t equals 5 to 8. Well, this sounds like a job for the intermediate value theorem. Uh, we'd like to know that it's satisfied, namely that the velocity is continuous on the interval uh, 5 to 8. And the key is that we're already given that it's differentiable. So that's our starting point. So we say Because V A of T is differentiable o 
over an interval that includes, right, we're told it's differentiable over a much wider interval than this, but that includes this. Uh, was it 5 to 8? Yes. Because it's differentiable over an interval that includes um, 5 to 8, we, also, we know that it's also continuous. over that interval, that same interval. Okay, and that's good. Therefore, the mean value, or rather the intermediate value theorem applies. Since the intermediate value theorem applies, we can say that because, uh, what did they want us to show? Negative 100 was realized somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Is intermediate. between the value at the two endpoints, namely uh, v of 5 and v of 8, and what is v of 5? Well, they told us v of 5 is 40, v of 8 is negative 120. Wow, that train is really turning around. Sorry to digress there. At any rate, those are the two endpoints. Those are the two values. Negative 100 is somewhere in between them. There must be a time somewhere in this interval, 5 to 8, let's call it a time C, is that what they call it in the, no, they don't say, but we're going to call it a, a time C in 5 to 8 when V sub A of C equals negative 100. Yep, we did it. Okay, let's go on to C. All right, we know that at t equals 2, we are 300 meters to the east. So now we need an expression involving an integral that tells us where we are at time t equals 12. And that sounds like a job for the fundamental theorem in its integral formulation. Okay. After all, we're trying to find position at some new point. Okay. That's like the position at some new point. It's got to be the position at some point we already know, and they give us that, plus the integral of the position's derivative, which is the velocity, and we know something about that, so we're going to apply that we are going to say that, what are we going to call the position? Okay, position of, let's call position of train A is x sub A of t. Um, what we're asked for is x of a at 12. Well, we know that that's equal to x of a at, what was the time they gave us? 2 
plus the integral from 2 to 12 of x sub a prime dt. But what is x sub a prime of t if not v sub a of t? Ta-da! Okay, that's the form they want. Now they want us to use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals to approximate this. I should have added that we know this. x sub a, that 2 was given to be 300. So we're going to approximate the integral. Let's call this um, c. C is approximately equal to using trapezoidal approximation. C is approximately equal to what? Well, the trapezoidal approximation is given right here, so we'll just write it out. We need three subintervals here. So, first we need a half. What's the velocity at t equals 2? 100. So we're averaging 100 plus 40. We're multiplying it by the width of that interval. We're going to add to that a half of 40 plus negative 120. We'll multiply by the width of that interval. And we'll add to that a half of negative 120 plus negative 150. And we'll multiply by the width of that interval. Hmm. If I knew what was good for me, I would stop right there. But let's see. 40 minus 120, that's negative 80. Half of that is negative 40. Multiply that by 3. What have I got here? I've got negative 270 times 2. I call that negative 540 because 4 over 2 is that. What have I got over here? 140 over 2 is 70. 70 times 3, that's... 210. Uh, this is negative 120. Negative 120, negative 540, that's negative 660. Add 210 plus the 300, and that's adding 510. 660 minus 510, I think I get negative 150. X of A at 12 equals negative 150. Yep. Okay, last part of the problem, and it's a related rates problem. So in a related rates problem, again, following the steps that I've outlined over here, the key is deciding what uh, rates need relating and then find an equation that connects the quantities whose rates we're trying to relate. So this is a classic right triangle problem in related rates, where we've got x sub a of t here. I'm going to call train b's position y sub b of t here. And then the distance between them I'm going to call z of t. Okay. So let's see, um, call train B's uh, Y position uh, Y of B. And the distance uh, between trains 
We're going to call that z of t. Okay, as we have here in this diagram. Okay, so we know that uh, x sub a of t, the quantity squared, plus y sub b of t, the quantity squared, equals z of t, the quantity squared. Uh, the next step is to differentiate implicitly. Okay, what are we going to get when we differentiate implicitly? Looks like we're going to need just a little more space. I'm going to steal some space from this problem over here. Uh, I'm differentiating implicitly. We get uh, 2 x sub a dx sub a dt plus 2 y sub b dy sub b dt equals 2 z dz dt. Now, what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for z, dz dt rather. So the first thing I'm going to do is, since all of these terms have a 2 in front of them, I'm just going to cancel it out across the whole equation. Okay, now let's see what numbers we know. x sub a x sub a at time 2 is 300. dx sub a dt, meaning the velocity, at time 2 is 100. Uh, y sub b is given as 400. Now we have to find dy sub b dt. Well, this feels really cramped, but I'm going to find dy sub b dt. That is going to be uh, negative 5 times 2 squared, that's negative 20, plus 60 times 2 is 120, plus 25. So that comes out to 125. And I apologize for not, oops, let's do that in blue. Apologize for not explicitly writing that out. Just a little tight on space. Now what about z? Well, they don't give us z explicitly at t equals 2, but we see that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. Or in other words, a 300, 400, 500 triangle. Okay, a lot of big numbers here, but we notice everything is in multiples of 100. So I'm going to rewrite this as uh, 300 plus 4 times 125 equals 5 times dz dt. Okay, that makes things a little more manageable. 4 times 125, that's 500. 300 plus 500 is 800. 800 divided by 5 is 160. So dz dt equals 160 uh, meters uh, per minute. Which reminds me, did we write down? Yeah, we should have written down these units here. Meters. Hopefully we got everything there. All right. Choo-choo. Away we go.